recording to the cloud and we are already live on Facebook. Um, so let's start with roll call. Um, Councilman McNamara. Present. Councilman Wolf. Present. Councilman Curl. Present. Councilman Benendetti. Here. Councilman Brueger. Here. Council President Shrimp. She's here somewhere. I saw her. Yeah, she oh, she's muted. muted. <laughs> here. There you go. All right. All right. We are going to go straight into the election of the council president. And does anybody have anything to say? Anybody have anything anywhere, anyhow? I'm just hoping Diane still wants to do it. I don't know all about it. it. <laughs> all right. Do we have some other, anybody else? Mark, Brian, David? Um, I was going to nominate council person uh, Wolf. He expressed that he wouldn't mind doing it. So I thought awesome. I'd nominate him. Hey, we got new new blood. Tony's all about our new blood. So yep, if um, people have me, I'll be I'd be glad to. I didn't think Perfect. Brian would volunteer to do anything. That's <laughs> I know. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I will say right. I checked with him before doing that. I wasn't okay. gonna no, I was <laughs> All right. So we have two on the table, Diane and Brian. I don't know exactly how you guys want to go about doing it or if anybody else has a recommendation. David, any comments, any you want to nominate anybody else? We can just go through the whole. Actually, we can't. We are on a time restraint, so we've got two great people. <laughs> <laughs> you guys may hear hear me say that a couple times tonight. Um, so, not really sure exactly how you guys want to proceed with two. Um, I don't know if you guys just want to do a um, we'll call vote. Yeah, however you guys want to do it. Do you guys just want me to go um, start with the other four? I mean, do you guys want to have a vote for yourself, or just do the other four and see where we're at? <laughs> Everybody, everybody, just a roll call. Uh, everybody votes. Just do the okay. roll, roll call. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So we will, let's just start with Diane. <coughs> President, council, well, we'll just say council member. Um, Diane? Uh, I'll vote for Brian. Sure. Okay. And then let's go with Councilman um, Brueger. I'll vote for uh, Councilperson Wolf. And let's go to Council McNamara. Well, I'd like to say that I have had absolutely no problems whatsoever with um, Diane and her role as council president. But seeing as the moving around of positions and the new blood um, ideas are what landed me here, I think it's only fair to give Brian Councilman Wolf a shot as well Perfect. in a new position. All right, Councilman Curl. Thank you, David. Well, um, that's a tough one. I'm not going to flip a coin. So uh, I think they're both excellent candidates, but I guess I'll, I'll go with the flow on uh, Brian. Perfect. And then Mr. we have Wolf. Brian, I'm going to put you on the spot then. Yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll vote for myself. Okay. And then that's all right. And oh, then how grandiose, my goodness. All right, and then we, we still have one more. We, we have uh, Tony. It's unanimous. There we go. All right, so we have a new um, council president. Um, thank you, Brian, for stepping up and thank you for doing it. So um, I just wanna make one little quick statement only because I totally forgot to do this on Saturday. I think my mind was sidetracked um, on other things, but I have no interest in changing everyone since we don't have any new elected officials or anything like that. I personally don't have any interest in changing around everybody's, um, the position that they're currently chairing. That being said, um, feel free if anybody does have a problem, question, concern, they're not happy where they are. Um, and I did have some people tell me that they were happy where they were, so that was the other reason. Um, if anybody does wanna switch anything up, please let me know and we can try to see if we can work that out just so you guys can do something different if you choose to do that. So as of right now, everybody that is currently chairing and on a certain committee um, is going to remain unless you reach out to me. Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Can we get uh, a, can we get like a recognition to um, 
council pre council um, person shrimp for a year of two years two years of a wonderful yes. service yes absolutely there you go yes our our socially distant three cheers <laughs> yes yeah i mean yeah. anybody yeah. that's this willing to step up, up okay yeah anybody that's willing to step up to do it i do, i really do appreciate it so okay let's go straight to the meeting minutes for december 14th 2020 council meeting has everybody had a chance to look at them sure okay so um do we have a motion to approve the december 14th 2020 council meeting minutes so moved second, second. i think tony got that one okay. all right <laughs> all those in favor Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Anything? Anybody? Okay. Your your dog is abstaining. She's going to destroy this bone. All right. Let's go. Okay. So those meeting minutes will be posted to the website as soon as possible. Um, we're going to move straight to the village official reports, and we are going to start with our police chief, um, Chief Delp. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, if you probably noticed your, uh, the chief's report that came out this month was a little different than previous months. Uh, we, the state, uh, changed the programming for our, uh, records management system. Um, it's now called swift RMS and, um, the reports that, uh, it creates for us aren't as, um, I don't know, user-friendly or something. But uh, um, the information is there. I put it in a format that hopefully is uh, easy enough for you to understand. Uh, but I would draw your attention to um, the uh, one item there that uh, was the uh, crime mapping. Um, so you had a map that had pretty much nothing on it. Right. As we go along with uh, using this new system, uh, reports that are taken um, will show up on that map. I have, uh, we have one report. Um, and if it's okay with everybody, I would share my screen and just kind of show you what that's going to look like in the future. Awesome. So um, you can see like, this is the, um, this is a map, some of what you, you have on in your report. And this little guy right here is a, uh, a report of a, uh, um, a theft by deception, which occurred. And uh, so eventually this will get populated with, uh, with all the reports we take. So um, you might have seven on there for the month. That would be, it would uh, actually um, uh, be um, in concurrence with the uh, report that you have in front of you with the uh, reports. The other one that uh, shows up there, uh, which just has Northeast and Northwest, we'll see how this plays out. I don't think that uh, um, I selected that wrong. I think that's just where we had our activity. So that's why it appears like that um, nothing occurred in South Village or in MI or any of those other places because apparently it did not. So um, any questions about those reports? Is that is that map going to be like a monthly thing? It refreshes every month, or it says it, like it, once the reports on there. Does it stay on there? Yeah, it's whatever parameters of your search you put in there. The one that you were looking at was the one that I showed you when I shared my screen was the first through today, uh, because I so knew we had taken ways you can download it and. Uh, yeah, you can uh, you can actually select different crimes. That was all crimes, um, all crimes reported. Uh, but you can narrow it down uh, if you have. I think it's set up so that if someone in a larger city was using that, they would be able to say, "All right, how many sex crimes have we had in this area?" And it would actually show up how many how many sex crimes they had in that area, something of that nature. I just selected all. I knew we had one report out there. Um, and then just to show you kind of what that's going to be like moving forward. All right. Um, the next news I have is uh, we're hiring a new officer, Officer um, Alan Fosna. Um, I believe I told you uh, took a, a position with Glendon Township Police Department. Um, so he's moving next door to another agency. 
Um, and we are hiring a young man named uh, Jeff Bingham. Um, he's uh, got several years of law enforcement experience, the last two being with uh, Mifflin Township. Um, hopefully, if things work out, his start date will be January 25th. And he should have a pretty abbreviated uh, field training because he's already familiar with the way that the uh, radio system works, um, the way that the, um, the CAD works on this, um, because we're all through the sheriff's department. So um, that should be very, fairly quick. The uh, last thing that I'm going to um, bring up to the group, we, uh, if you recall, we hired um, um, an officer, Reese Southern. Um, you guys approved his hiring, I think at the last meeting or the meeting before that. And uh, he is, was at his old job, a canine officer. Um, it turns out that he owns that canine. It's actually his canine. And um, he's bringing that canine with him um, here. Uh, we have an opportunity right now to um, outfit a uh, one of our police cruisers with a uh, canine transport um, and uh, get this program up and running with uh, zero cost to the village. Um, he's got the cage donated for the uh, dog and uh, prisoner transport. Uh, he has, oh, what else did he have? Um, the food is all donated. Um, Vet care is all donated. Um, the canine equipment um, is all free, uh, comes with the dog. Um, the only thing it's going to cost us is about, and maybe 16 hours of overtime pay a month because there's mandatory state training that they, he has to go to as a canine handler um, twice a month. That's it. So. Uh, it's an opportunity. Um, we're going to try it, see if it works, um, and then uh, evaluate it at the end of the year. Does that does that work out? Where you know once so he's going to the dog's going to stay with the officer at night. I mean, he bring, when he's with work and he brings the dog with him and takes him home at night. Yep, uh, that dog that dog lives with him. He's part of their family, um, and it travels to and from work in his vehicle. Would the canine be, I mean, I, I understand that this is, you know, a police trained dog and can do the, do the, uh, you know, the, I'm assuming it can do, you know, the drug searches and the uh, apprehension, things like that. But is there any room in this dog's role for outreach and, you know, like, uh, you know, you know, getting, I don't know, like with, with kids or whatever, like. Like I, I don't know if that's a thing that they do. <laughs> okay, so this particular canine, I'm, I'm going to, um, if it's okay with you, I'm going to share my screen again. Absolutely. And bring up, perhaps I'm going to share my screen again. Does our four legged mm -hmm. trooper have a name? Yes, it's a, it's a female named Kimber. And it is, I'm kind of looking here. All right, here we go. And let's get back to Zoom here so I can share my screen. And there you are. All right, if you guys can see that, uh, this is uh, a um, canine called uh, Kimber. Um, she's a Dutch Shepherd female. She's trained for on and off lease obedience, imprinted in narcotics detection. This is not a uh, chase down the bad guy and bite him in the leg dog. This is uh, strictly um, for narcotics detection. Uh, but it's also trained in social, um, uh, social uh, situations. So it's trained so that it can... Um, you can take this into a school and kids can pet it and do everything to it. It's non-aggressive. Perfect. That is exactly what I was hoping to hear. We could do some real, real positive outreach for children. 
Yes. In addition I, to the other things. I will admit I was not necessarily 100% on board if it was a chase people down and detain them dog. Um, but this sounds like a wonderful dog to have. First thing but I that thought, was that was my perspective as well on Councilman yeah. Ruger. The first thing that we had taught that I had said and Chief knows that when we were talking about it was with the middle schools coming in and all that kind of stuff and the two yeah. elementary schools um, hopefully we'll be able to have some good use out of that. So, I mean, it, it is pretty exciting. All right, so I'm not gonna be, you know, I think this is a great opportunity. If anybody has any problems, questions, concerns, write them down, I mean, email them, um, talk I about mean, it in the next the meeting. Hand up. What's that? I, I had my hand up, but I, it wasn't about the, the, the dog. Um, Go ahead. I didn't know if Chief was done with his report. No, I- That's all I have. Okay. I just that one photograph, uh, the dog looks like it's just grabbed the Grinch that stole Christmas in its <laughs> mouth. <laughs> All right. Um, so I had a question on the reports. Go ahead. Uh, real, real quick uh, for the chief. Sure. So the, uh, the one is offenses by, uh, oh, <laughs> it's funny, offenses by offenses by district, and then uh, there's nine of those, right? And then the next one is uh, ticket numbers. It's, it's a ticket report. Yes. I was just that I'm just not familiar with what gets a ticket and what doesn't get a ticket. So are the nine above or the ones that are they different than the people that get a ticket or tickets just traffic or? So the first report you were looking at are reports. Um, those are criminal reports, uh, something that we took or criminal actions where we interceded. So you'll notice that on that report where it says that uh, we had an improper handle of a firearm in a motor vehicle or weapons under disability, those are crimes, stuff that you go to court, jail time, um, maybe even prison time on some of those. Some of those are felonies. So uh, with those, there's actually a criminal report generated. Um, the tickets are just traffic citations in which someone was either speeding, ran a, ran a stop sign, um, had an equipment violation, something of that nature. And okay. that's, that's the difference. Okay, thank you. And on the, the ones that there was a criminal, are all these in every situa situation that's reported, is it always, is it just on a capture? So if the no, person gets no, no, away, no. if they no, get no, no. If, um, they get away, do you report that or do you only report it if you actually apprehend? No, no, that's, it, it, we have a report of a crime. If someone reports that their mailbox was, uh, was uh, hit with a baseball bat, um, that'd be a criminal damaging report. We would take that. If someone um, wants to report that during the night, someone went through their vehicle and stole their laptop that they left in the back seat, that would be a report. Um, it has, doesn't have anything to do with the actual arrest, um, but I believe that that, uh, and I don't have a copy of it with me because maybe I do. Um, I believe that report has, now the old report would actually say if there was a, um, if charges were filed and uh, with this new report, um, it may be that I can put in, um, a column that says charges filed or something. Like I said, the, the system's new. I'm still learning the ropes on it. Um, it's been live for uh, since the fourth. So we've had it for what, seven days. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, we're still, we're still figuring it out. Okay. And this is one that you were, you had to take, right? Because it's part of the equipment. Is that what you were saying? So this, um, we use the Ohio Law Enforcement Gateway. Um, it's called OLEG. And uh, it's free to departments provided by the state. There's no cost to this system. Um, we used a combination of OLEG call records and OLEG's records management system. And basically what would happen is you would use call log to record an incident, and then you would go and make a report off that number. They combined those two into one system and made it user friendly and uh and we're we're figuring it out but but we can't beat it for the price okay okay thank you does anybody else have any questions for chief all right i am going to move on then to mike flickinger's report um make this 
as simple as possible. Um, Westerville City School District, um, right now he's waiting in the wings for any inspections that he's gonna be called out for, but at this point, we know they're coming, they're not there yet. There's task order 13 is the 2020 sanitary sewer improvement project. Um, all work included in the original contract and the first change order is complete. Through the rehabilitation work, they have identified even more potential work, adding a point repair and uncovering two buried manholes so they are accessible in the future. They have issued an RFP to the contractor and to get the proposed prices for this additional work. And if the pricing is acceptable, they are going to recommend that we go ahead and do the change order to include this work. Um, we have a resident concern on Lakewood Drive. I'm not gonna go in crazy detail. We are currently looking to see if there are some potential issues at this house related to some of the sewer work. Um, definitely not implying that there are and definitely not implying that there are not. Um, she definitely has some issues. So we're, we're doing everything we can to figure out why and how. Task order number 15 is the 2020 storm sewer improvement project. All work included in that project is complete. Um, the village and Insight have executed two change orders for $33,500, reducing the overall project to $183,500. All additional work was covered under the $50,000 contingency included in the bid documents. So we were able to do some changes and move things around as they, as they seemed fit. Um, and all of those were included in the budgeted prices. So Insight has submitted for their final payment request. Um, they have reviewed the request and agree with the amount, um, but they are not forwarding the pay request until they submit their post-contract CCTV documentation, which they anticipate doing this week. So 2020 storm sewer improvement project is done. Sanitary sewer is pretty much done um, with the exception of the possible changes. Last but not least, the 2021 Storm Sewer Improvement Project. They have completed an analysis size of the Park Lane Drive area in the North Lake, and they are preparing uh, record documentation, or da 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 da, da. Um, They are gonna be preparing documentation for the analysis this week. Depending on availability, they intend to prepare, to prepare a planning level cost estimate for the revised Storm Sewer Project and discuss with the village. So, all of that in a nutshell, we are going to be meeting with Mike Flickinger. Um, he has confirmed that he is willing to meet with us Monday night. Monday night is also the day that we plan on meeting with um, the group and going over 2021 um, projects that they want to move forward with. So I'm going to ask, do you guys want to go ahead and do Mike Flickinger at 6 p.m. and that meeting at 7? Or he is willing to do something later in the week or even next week or the week after, whenever you guys want to schedule the Mike Flickinger. My concern is Mike Flickinger is going to talk for more than an hour. Um, so I'm thinking that that needs to have its own meeting. I am not I, I'm going over any of this right now. It's going to be a long meeting because the Yasmeen market's going to need to come up in the East Shore Court, this, the task order number 18. So it's going to be a long discussion with Mike. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to think about that for the next little bit and just schedule a later meeting with Mike that will solely be a Mike meeting instead of trying to rush it on well, next Monday. Seeing that's a streets committee meeting, I think it'd be wise to give him a little more time to- uh, I agree. Especially to get the Yasmin market stuff. I'll get it scheduled, but my first initial thought is maybe the last Tuesday or Wednesday of the month. That's my initial thought right okay. after our, our last council meeting of the month. So I'll get back to you guys on that. Um, that is the engineer's report. You guys aren't going to ask me any questions. I don't have any answers. Um, other than we are meeting with Mike and I will be inviting everyone to that meeting. And I'm very hopeful that everybody will be able to attend. Um, let's move on to Leah's report, the fiscal officer. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, we received a, um, $1,000, um, a grant from PEP. Um, it's a safety grant that will be used for the railing on the new stairway in the back of the building. Um, we haven't closed the month of December because we're still waiting on the letter from the county engineer. Um, it, this letter gives us the amount of uh, motor vehicle license tax for 2020, um, which needs to be posted in December. So um, Kim said last year she received it near the end of January. Um, so once we get that, we'll be able to close December and um, get the financials to you. 
Perfect. And the first two dates, Diane, that she thought might be good dates to meet would be February 1st and February 3rd. If you guys want to look at that on your calendar and get back to me, the time is still to be determined. So if you have one of those days that works better, let us know. And then we can go ahead and get that at least scheduled and get it pinpointed down. So let's move straight on. Oh, wasn't there some... No, no, we're not. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, we're, I'm not going to get into all everything um, and spin your spin your head on that. So it's just easier. When did you become Kreskin? I, I did. It, it's one of those things that it's something that um, in in respect to Kim, we're not ready yet. So I kind of briefly mentioned something I mean, with him. I think I think I know what you're saying. Anyway, you come in order, but hi next. Okay, let's go on to legal counsel, Jesse. I have nothing to report. Yay! <laughs> My favorite report. This, That's right. This hopefully, will be. Want to watch this game bad tonight? <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> hey, you know what? There, there's not very many that we have a lot of people on here, and the people at home are probably in the same boat. I hope they get done with this so I can watch the game. Um, <laughs> next, we're going to go to Tony, and this is kind of where I thought maybe we would do the recommendations, so we didn't add it anywhere. I don't believe um, that was my initial thought. I guess I didn't move down to make sure. Um, no, we did not. Okay. So I'm thinking we could go ahead and do that with you, Tony, if you don't mind, but do you have anything for planning and zoning yet? I know we haven't had a no, meeting. we're still, uh, haven't had a meeting yet. Exactly. Okay. So as you guys are fully aware, we have some openings. Um, I'm going to give my recommendation. You guys can give your two cents. We did kind of go over this in pretty good detail. Um, I don't think there's a way to please everybody. And I did take everybody seriously. Recommendation is going to be for the voting members, Brady Oxander. Um, as everybody is fully aware, we really wanted somebody in the new development. I have said that a hundred times live and I'm gonna stick with that. Um, so that would be Samuel Young. And then as another voting member, it was again, went back and forth, but I believe for the projects that we're getting ready to do, Beth McFarland would be amazing to step up in that voting position. In the non-voting position, my recommendation is to keep Lisa Pratt Lisa Craddock fit off. Um, and again, having somebody that's been through the last couple years on planning and zoning would be great. Sorry. Um, and then Eddie Bell is also a current member and we would leave him where he is at this point in time. And I think he would be fine. You know, I think he would be great there. He is great there. Um, he's also a new member. Everybody's pretty much new on there. Um, so having him move up or stay where he's at, I don't think is a huge issue because again, everybody's only a couple months um, he's only a couple months ahead of the other two. So I don't know if you guys want anybody a motion to approve. If anybody doesn't want to approve, you are totally fine with that. That's my move, recommendation. Move to approve. Second. Second. All right. We're going to give that to Diane. Sorry, she was the loudest. Okay. All, do you guys want me to do a roll call? No, all, no, all, in, favor? all in favor. Just a voice. Favor. Favor. Aye. Is there any Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any extensions? Anything. Okay. So we are good. We're moving forward with that. Um, we'll talk about the third seat here in a little bit um, because that's not approved and we'll go with that. Eric, you are up. Are you on mute? Yes, sorry, Mayor. There you go. Good to see everyone again. Um, so we're going to keep it short and sweet for obvious reasons uh, as per the um, discussion at the work session. Uh, major happenings uh, include the Westerville schools moving forward. Um, obviously, the, you see the elementary school beginning its process and it'll be coming out of the ground soon. Uh, the next stage, the middle school is moving quickly and we expect to see a submission any day now in order to uh, meet a couple week advertisement to make the February 3rd meeting. But I, we do expect to see them in the February meeting for planning zoning for review. And uh, that's all I have. I'll take any questions. Perfect. Does anybody have any questions for Eric at this point? All right. Diane, MPCA. I don't know if you really have. We, um, Becky had asked me, I, I, and I, we just kind of went back and forth. But with you doing the newsletter, we thought maybe you would have some updates. Um, I wasn't sure if they've even had a meeting since um, then. Yeah, I, I, well, I can tell you that anyway. Yeah, there's perfect. no, there has not been a meeting since Christmas. There is a meeting on Wednesday. Okay. So if, unless they cancel it, which sometimes okay. they do. And I, and I just want to say that, uh, 
you know, I got my newsletter on Saturday. Hopefully most people got the newsletter on Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, all right. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I really did not not have a report because of this tonight. I've just honestly been busy all day. Um, so I guess I could make up some stuff and really try to make, make it sound like I have a bunch to talk about, but right now Nothing we've been working on dredging. We've been working on, you know, getting some quotes. We've been working on a lot of different things. We plan on opening the building back up mm. January, the Tuesday after the Monday holiday and next week. So I think it's the 19th is when we're hoping to have the building back open, everybody back in there, everybody working. Um, it may or may not work depending on cases and all of that, but we're trying. So that's the quick answer I have. Does anybody have any specific questions though for me? Has anybody else been vaccinated just out of curiosity? No. That they care to share. Okay, <laughs> no worries. And I don't know if I can say that, but I'm not aware of anybody. And I'm pretty certain that the police department are not on the list to be vaccinated. I don't believe anybody has the ability to do it. And I'm pretty 100% positive of that. All okay. I can say is my, the three people that are seniors that I volunteer with, they've all been they've all gotten their first shot. So at least somebody's getting a shot. Good, I, I've gotten my first as well. I just didn't know if anybody else yeah. met their met criteria in other roles in their lives. Nope, okay. Okay. So, let's go to committee reports and we're gonna start with you, David. All right, uh, Madam Mayor, Mr. President. Um, pretty brief, we have a community meeting on the 19th to discuss um, that we decided that that was going to be the resident wishes to kind of flesh out all that stuff and the priorities, I believe. Um, and then um, I would like to get in touch with Mr. John, um, maybe the next week, maybe the next, before too much longer to get a pool meeting set up so we can figure out what went right in 2020, what we need to do better in 2021. So I will have updates that I will report. Um, after the 19th and after the uh, meeting with uh, Mr. John, our fearless aquatic leader. I yield my time. And he's usually available anytime in the evening. So um, I usually don't have any problem just a couple days in advance and which we have right. to do anyways. So, all right, anybody have any questions for him? Diane, you're up. Yeah, finance. I have nothing, uh, nothing new. No new report came out, and we're all quiet until we start getting our financials. So, good. Perfect. Um, and I, and I, I'm just going to be the one to say it. There's going to be a lot when it comes out. Not nothing bad, but there's going to be a lot. So. Oh yeah, um, there were a lot. There was a lot of year end stuff, and yeah. of course adjustments and things like that. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, there'll be a lot to look at. I imagine. Yes, there's going to be. So. All right, um, let's move to Tony Streets. I know I kind of take your fire when I give the engineer's report, but. Nothing to report. Nice. I think you've been better. All right, Joe, communications. Well, we need to schedule a meeting and uh, with Diane in her new position, maybe we could, uh, you know, get down to some of the things that fell through the cracks last year with COVID going on. And I do have quite a few things that I would like to discuss in the community in the communications one. So I think it would be great to schedule. I don't know if you guys just want to stay till the very end. That way we can get everybody else off um, to schedule any meetings that we want to schedule. Um, I know for Brian, it might be easy for him to do it since Chief is on here. But um, I would love if we could stay till the end. And um, that is one thing I'll stay on here for is to get some meetings scheduled. All right. Mm -hmm. any, any questions? All right, Brian, you're up. Safety. Yep. Nothing. Nothing to report from safety. I was just looking to schedule a meeting, and uh, Chief Delp, your um, so while while I have you here, I just wanted to do that. Uh, we've been doing like five o'clock to to an accommodation for you. Does five p.m. on the twentieth work for you? And does it work for everybody else on the committee? Speak now or hold your peace. Are the committees going to stay the same? Yes. Yeah. We're looking at Wednesday the 20th? Yep, 5 p.m. Well, oh, at 5, that's right. No. Yeah. Planning and zoning is at 7. Uh, if that works for you, that's it. Works for me. All right, unless anybody on the anybody else on the committee has an issue, we'll call that then, and I'll send out an agenda, you know, a few days before. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. I'll let Becky know. 
Um, I'll give her the list of all of them, the updates. And I'm assuming we have no questions for Brian, um, at least until after the 20th. So let's move to Mark legislation. Um, we do already have a meeting scheduled for six o'clock on the 25th. And you're keeping that, correct? I meant yeah. to ask you that. Okay, perfect. As far as I know now, do we have any work sessions or anything between now and then? We have Mon yeah, next Monday. Next we're gonna Monday. Be yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, right now, assuming things go the way they should go tonight, it might get canceled, um, but it's easier to keep on the books. Yeah. <clears throat> Planning and zoning could throw you some loops too. Maybe they'll have some stuff for you to talk about. There you go. Well, and maybe even just, well, if, if, if they come back with yes or no to our thing from tonight, we don't need a whole meeting for that. Okay, yeah, so that, that gets to moving on to actual legislation. So uh, we have resolution 2020-39, final confirmation of SP. That is currently still tabled. Does anyone want to move to untable that? No hands, I will move on. Um, we have ordinance 09-2020, the sidewalks that is currently tabled. And I will be moving to untable that and vote on it. That would be a third reading. So I believe we would need a vote for passage as well. Yeah, so first we have to move to untable and I'll second that motion. All right, moved and seconded. This is just a voice vote, is it, Diane? Yeah, all in favor. Aye. Yeah, all in favor, aye. say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, it is untabled. So this is ordinance, third reading of ordinance 09-2020, uh, codifying sidewalk repair and replacement in, well, really any place with sidewalks, uh, which really is just the new area. And I'm going to move for adoption. Second. I think that was Brian that seconded. Correct. Okay, you cut out right, uh, at least on mine. So, all right. All right. All right. Do you want me to do? Do you want to do it? Or do you want me to do it? Go you, ahead. you write things down. Do you always? Yeah, yeah, you guys keep doing it. Yeah. All right. So we have Councilman Curl. Aye. Councilman McNamara. I, uh, however, just remember what I said in legislation. I wish that this was ideal from the get-go. All right. And we have council president. Oh my goodness. This is so weird to say. I'm gonna have to get used to that. Well, I, and who am I missing? Who am I missing? Councilman Benedetti. No. I'm just adding this to my list of all the other ordinances that are going to have to be redone. Be five minutes. Um, and then Councilman Brueger. Aye. And, and Councilman Shrew. Aye. How did I miss you? <laughs> you I have you written before. down. You're number three on my list. Here so today, just, gone tomorrow. I, don't know. I, I know. My goodness. What a fall. I am just, yeah, I, I'm not even calling on you now. All right. I mean, you're so, just, you just, you know, the beer is ready, the popcorn's done, and yet it's like you're smelling all the good food, and you're just okay. I, I have, on your yeah, head. I have commotion going on at my house. The kids are all going in circles, and the dogs are going crazy because the kids are going crazy. So, all right, all right. We, are good. On. we have the second reading of Ordinance 20, 2020 uh, changes to our oh uh, um easy yeah. No, this one is, yes, planning and zoning. This gives official, uh, clear, distinct language that some permits can be handled administratively. It's just a second reading, nothing exciting. Um, all right, and I'm going to point out that on our thing, this should be, this next one, it says ordinance 01-2020. It should be 2021, correct? Yeah, yes. Yeah, make sure that is it wrong on the actual legislation or just the agenda? Good question. Let's look. All right, let me zoom down to the actual legislation. It's, it's 01 2021. So, yeah, just the agenda. Okay, just wrong. okay then there you go. It is uh, 01 2021, uh, an ordinance to change our employee handbook for um, military leave for people who get called to duty or have to do their two weeks in the summer, one weekend a month. Um, 
Unless someone wants to say anything more about that, I'm done with that. And finally, I'm gonna make a motion to amend the agenda to add a new piece of legislation that is not currently listed there. It would be ordinance 02, 2021. Second. Who was that? Yeah, Brian. You can give it to Tony. Was, Tony was, was, he was right on my tails and yeah, we, we can give it to Tony. He, he needs a little love. I okay, am, perfect. I am this is probably track. also just a voice vote, I imagine. Yes. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so that's going to give us the first reading of 02-2021. It is an ordinance to change the makeup of the Planning and Zoning Committee, adding one additional non-voting member. Currently, there are three voting members and two non-voting members who were recommended this evening. This would create a third non-voting member slot. And the quick answer to that is um, we have a lot of people that have applied. We actually have some good interest in that. And, you know, uh, there was a couple people said the more the merrier and getting some people involved is exactly what I think the village has been trying to do um, for years. And so to not do it now, while we have some active people, why not? So that's go. where we are. I, I would just like to, to hear from the, the chair at some point or if, uh, just a confirmation that the chair, the chair that has to manage the meeting is okay. With right. The and, and that was exactly what Tony wants to do on, that's why it's just a first reading and all of that. We aren't trying to rush it. Um, but, you know, having a big long discussion in, or a short discussion in session of zoning. Um, hey, and and, liaison, I will prom I promise you, I will find out their feelings. Yes. And report back in my next report. Absolutely. So, and I don't, I, I think that that's a great idea. And I mean, not, <coughs> Yeah, let's let's see what all planning and zoning has to say. So <laughs> I'm going to say this really fast. I don't know where this next 20 minutes is gonna go. Um, we're getting ready to go into new business, old business. This may go in 10 seconds and it may not. So I am going to say this. Eric, Jesse, Chief, Leah, if you guys wanna jump off, you guys are more than welcome to and have a great night. <laughs> I don't have- Mayor, stay to eight. Okay. So we're, let's go into new business. Um, I don't know that anybody has anything, but go for it if you do. I do. Go for it. <laughs> That's because we do have a few minutes. Now, if it was getting close to eight, I'd no. figure it out. But the thing that I would like to, uh, I'd like to see if we can add into our uh, agenda or make it a, a you know, topic that we start discussing more is, uh, you know, how we, the, pro the policies and procedures and the staffing that we have here, uh, you know, specifically I'm, I'm talking about the job roles and defining what each person does in the office. Like, you know, for example, you know, technically Leah is responsible for maintaining all the public records, but Becky's the one that actually does that. And, and there's, there's so many, you know, uh, you know, policy procedure type uh, things that we need to talk about in general. And it's how we're going to, uh, you know, run the village. You know, we're having a problem right now finding a code enforcement officer. And I'm want to recommend that we start thinking about creating a different position that is encompasses uh, a couple different jobs and try to maybe create, instead of having, you know, right now we got a bunch of part-time positions. We got a code enforcement officer, a planner, a maintenance guy, you know, and we've talked about needing a, a, a clerk of council, you know, that we really should designate someone who is the public records person. You know, so in the spirit of, uh, you know, something along the lines of a charter is that, you know, I'm not saying, well, I want to create a charter commission or anything like that, but we need to address the, the problems that we can fix without having a charter. Um, and like I was saying, I think we, it, it's incumbent upon us to try to do a better job of defining the roles of the individual people. 
because there's some things that are crossing over and you know like i said with the with the public record stuff is that uh you know like i said technically that's all supposed to be or you know leah is the one that's responsible Leah that. is the one, that, and let me comment. Leah is the one that does all of the public records when it comes to the police department doing fireproof and getting the boxes in and out and ordering them. What Becky has been doing is Becky is the one that gets together all of the final reports at the end of the year for all of the legislation. So like all of the meeting minutes and all of that kind of stuff, she does put together more of like the council end of year stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, all of like the legislation that's passed and all that kind of stuff. So Be she does all of her end of year, those types of things. But Leah does do the public records, public, everything that from comes in. From the police department, but not from the village. Uh, she still does everything as far as sends in. She is the one that keeps complete control of all of the fireproof records. Well, so every, everything that gets sent to, to fireproof, she is in control of. So she definitely does do that. Now, well, this, is, this would be part of the overall, you know, conversation is trying yeah. to figure out what right. the individual people are doing. The other thing that we had recently talked about, you know, is I just found out how much time is spent uh, doing notary work. Yes. And, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, I'd like to, you know, propose that we stop doing that. Providing, tight, a, yeah. you know, because we need to try to concentrate on keeping our our staff working on, you know, like in Leah's half her working on financial matters and not stopping to go do a stinking, uh, you know, notary thing. Yeah, it you is. Know. It is definitely time consuming. And I will tell you, that's one of the things that um, if, you know, having a code enforcement officer or the next person, if we end up getting, you know, a person that is going to stick around, that was one of the things that we wanted to make sure that the code enforcement person did, um, because it does pull Leah away from being able to do those things. Um, we get quite a few people that come in to have whatever um, notarized. And it's not just a matter of notarizing it. I mean, you've got to stop everything you're doing. It's just like everything. You stop in the middle of everything you're doing. You run upstairs because of course she works downstairs. So she runs upstairs. She does that. Of course, you know, half the people want to have small talk. Um, and it does, it pulls you away from what you're doing. Now, if that's something that people want her to continue to do, but I think it's important for council members to know you know, what does go on in a general day to day. So I am not opposed to having that conversation with people, letting them know, and even having Becky and Leah as part of that conversation. So they can kind of give you an overview of what they do during the day. Um, I, I think that's a, a great idea for people to understand, you know, I know I can tell you this is what they do. And then the next day I could tell you something totally different. So I don't feel like they're overwhelmed. I don't feel like anything like that, but it, you know, there are definitely times in which their time could be spent better um because they are you know they are being pulled away from doing certain things so tony i, I don't well, i don't have an issue it, with that well I, I think to keep things on point is that i think you know for the next agenda maybe we start talking more about uh you know creating another position or you know trying to consolidate some or or, or you know because there had been already been talk about having a clerk of council uh you know, an assistant to help out with all the stuff in there. And, and maybe, you know, again, we'll probably go into more detail in this, in the work session or whenever, whenever we do discuss this. But uh, I think it would be uh, to our benefit to try to create a position that's more appealing to people. Instead of having a bunch of part-time positions, we could have a, one full-time position that would, you know, cover code enforcement and some of the other, you know, things that this, that Becky and Lee are doing, you know, so I think we need to, you know, to bring that up in our next meeting. And that's all really I got to say right now, because we could go on and on and on about the details of that way past eight o'clock. That's okay. all I have for my new business. All and right. Then President, you... President Wolf, if, if you could get that into our, into our next uh, agenda. Captured. I got it. Here All right. Greatest. I already. Does anybody here. else have any new business? All right. Let's move over to old business because we do still have. Um, I'm going to go with nine minutes. If anybody has anything for old business, um, now's your chance. Well, you're going to use all eight minutes. No, I don't think we're going to use any of it. So. Okay. Oh, all right. 
I think everybody's afraid to talk. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If there isn't anything, I don't think we all want to sit in here in silence, but we do have a meeting next Monday night that we are going to be discussing different things. Um, you know, some of our visions and plans for 2021. So if anybody's watching this, definitely tune in next week. Um, maybe that's something that I'm sure maybe we can live stream. Um, anybody has anything that they want to email for us to talk about, go for it. And then we've got several meetings that are coming up. So just watch the face or watch the, um, website to see when all of those are, you know, when all the new upcoming meetings are. And then the final thing I have to say is food trucks are back. Um, uh -huh. I'm not to do, yeah, I'm not trying to do too much right now. I've had some people reach out to me wanting me to reach out to them, but I'm not trying to be crazy in um, January, February, just because it's so cold. But, you know, again, two or three, four a month, um, once a week is typically what we're going to stick with. And some weeks we may not have any. So that's all I have. <laughs> And my dogs are going to start again. Move so. to adjourn. All right. Anybody want to end this? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Go Bucks. Go Bucks. <laughs> All right. Good night. Good Go Bucks. Guys. <laughs> Everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.